All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to this individual coming off of a foray into the one circle relatively recently in a bout with Thomas Narmo. Going to talk about that a little bit, as well as a few other subjects. Talking to Elaine Angolani, welcoming him onto the show for the very first time. How are you feeling and everything, man? Is quarantine a little bit boring there, or are you having a fun time with it? <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I mean, I just I just got back to Hong Kong and I just uh, came out of the quarantine, yeah. So, yeah, it's good. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm in good spirit. Yeah, what did you find yourself uh, getting up to to kill some time while you were in quarantine? Well, I took time to, uh, to do a lot of uh, reading and a lot of work on, uh, you know, writing a lot on, uh, on my training and, uh, and, um, and on my, uh, you know, work on, uh, uh, on my videos. You know, I have on Instagram, I have, um, uh, I take care of uh, a lot of clients uh, all around the world. So I have to make programs. So, you know, I take time to make programs, training programs. Yeah, and I was going to ask about that because it seems like you're very passionate about fitness and teaching people about various aspects of that, just general wellness and everything like that. How important is it to you to, I guess, impart that to other people? And I imagine they, you know, document their journeys with you and stuff like that, and they're pretty indebted to you as well. Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have to say I'm very fortunate to be uh, doing, you know, what I like to do, what I love, what I'm passionate about. So... Um, it's, it, it, everything that I do is around what I'm passionate about. And what I'm passionate about is about uh, a healthy lifestyle, uh, uh, exercising and uh, keeping a uh, you know, fairly good habit. You know? So that's what I'm passionate about and I'm very happy to share it with other people. So my lifestyle, you know, my training, my lifestyle uh, is, is what I share with people. Yeah, it's awesome to see, and it seems like a healthy lifestyle has been a part of your approach for quite a while, like even since you were like five years old when you were kind of introduced into the judo fold there. Can you kind of talk about those early days there, just like judo and karate and just like really, you know, finding yourself in the martial arts world there? Yes, exactly. I mean, I I, I was uh, influenced by uh, uh, my family, my mom especially, I mean, my parents were... um, uh, very uh, into you know being fit and uh, living a healthy lifestyle um so my mom introduced us to to martial arts very, very early in our you know in our upbringing so when i was five years old i started my martial arts journey and then he never stopped so i'm very thankful because that really has kept me you know away from uh, a lot of trouble uh, it kept me you know on the right path it kept me uh, very centered in my life uh it kept me uh you know very uh, also very knowledgeable and and you know knowing what I want and be passionate about something and and being disciplined you know it teaches you a lot of value you know value of uh, you know respect about uh, honesty about uh, hard work and about the dedication so all these value were taught to me by uh, martial arts and I'm, I'm very grateful so uh, it has made the man that I am today and and that's that's you know that's uh, uh, you know I'm very grateful about that yeah, it seems awesome for just a general lifestyle consideration. And it also seems like the goal was, you know, always there to compete. Like, is that a fair characterization where you're always looking to like get out there and compete and express yourself? Yes. Look, um, earlier, uh, I mean, in a, as a family tradition, the parents always guide uh, the, the children onto a career path. And then they kind of influence even your career path. So my parents were always about, you know, you should try to be a doctor, and this, this my brother should try to be a a, doc, a, um, a, uh, a lawyer, and this one should try to be this one. So they always influence like, your career path. But for me, even though they have influenced my career path, and they wanted me to be a doctor, to study medicine, to do uh, uh, to do well in uh, mathematics, in physics, and so that I can. You know, focus on that part and be uh, and go to university and do science. Um, I was I love martial arts, and my dream was being able to be a world champion and able to own a martial arts center where I could uh, change people's lives, where I could you know introduce people to healthy lifestyle and give them healthy habits and 
you know, keep them uh, fit and, you know, ultimately have around me, uh, you know, people who are, uh, you know, who feel, are feeling better mentally, physically, just the way I do and just the way I, I thought it was, uh, was the right way to be, you know, to be, you know, mentally, you know, healthy and, and fit and, and happy. So I'm very happy that I focused on that. And when I could, I changed uh, at university and then I, I went for, I studied science and, uh, and I went to, 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 you know, around the world competing and opened my center. And, and it's been a dream. It's been a dream. It's been a blast. Uh, today, I have uh, a lot of young uh, coming up, uh, athletes and also uh, just uh, kids, uh, school kids and uh, teenager people who are looking up to me. You know, all these kids are looking up to me and, uh, and, and you know, with my approach and my guidance, I'm very happy to say that I've been helping them a lot and guiding them into, you know, the right path and guiding them to choose, you know, the right lifestyle and to be healthy, to be passionate about whatever they want to do. And those are the value that martial arts is true. So I'm very happy that today, you know, I use, you know, my approach and my influence to, to, to guide these kids, you know, we are in Hong Kong and all over the world. I have kids who contact me from all over the world, parents who introduce me to the kids. And, and even if their kids were in trouble or doing the wrong thing, they, they find out that the kids uh, uh, can be influenced by me. And, and when I talk to them, I connect with them very quickly. And it's, it's very easy for me to, to um, you know, to guide them and to, to connect with them and to influence them. And I'm very happy to be able to do that. Yeah, that must be amazing just being a role model for these young martial artists because I imagine there was a lot of martial artists that you looked up to that inspired you as well. Yes, definitely. I think I think it's just fair that, you know, I translate uh, the same thing. Uh, you know, growing up, we all are influenced uh, one way or another. Uh, I was influenced. I was influenced by uh, Bruce Lee. I was influenced by uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, uh, whom I know today. And uh, and it's only fair that you know uh, I've, uh, I I receive like message from all over the world. I have kids contacted me, and I'm, I'm I'm very happy when I see that, especially when I see a kid trying to reach you know reach out to me and 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 saying you know you are my favorite person in the world, or you are my favorite athlete, or or can I just you know my dream is to be able to to see you or to meet you or to train with you. You know this is. Uh, this is amazing, right? And and I take that opportunity to to get back to to the kid and to help them, you know, any way that I can. So it's uh, it, I've been doing that, and I'm very pleased. That really, it's a, it's a life fulfillment to be able to do that. You know, more than anything else that I gain in my life, I think that's uh, that's my uh, legacy. Yeah, that's awesome to hear you talking about that, man. It's clearly something you're passionate about, and you value but you mentioned you know bruce lee and some of the martial artists like jean claude van damme that you looked up to there some of the knockouts you have there kind of look like something out of a movie almost like that you know debut knockout you had there one fc 10 when you got the you know wheel kick and the follow-up punches there like how satisfying is it when you just get like a picture perfect kind of a finish like that is it almost indescribable or like what would you say about you know that kind of a finish because that was you know just electric yeah, I mean it's uh, it's it's uh, it's awesome. It's, it's amazing, and uh, it's been a blast. It's been a blast, you know, to be able to step in there and uh, and come out with such a performance. You know, it doesn't always happen. You know, in training, I'm able to do a lot of things. I'm able to create, you know, a lot of movement and a lot of combination and come out with some uh, some some really you know amazing uh, 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 style and amazing uh, uh, combination. And it's not often that you manage to translate that into the cage or the ring, because you know, in the ring or in the cage, you have someone in front of you who also is trying to hurt you. So it's difficult to put it there. You know, you have a lot of things in mind, but you can't always find you know uh, an opening to get that in. And I'm always looking for that. I'm always looking for that. So once you manage to put that in, it's it's uh, it's amazing. You know, it's something that you, you can never forget. And and, uh, and it goes into your collection. 
Yeah, and one other aspect of martial arts that I think is cool is instances of seeing just, you know, former opponents training together. And it seems like you were able to do that with Ong La on Song relatively recently at Sanford MMA there. Can you kind of talk about those experiences there? Yeah, look, uh, I'm also very fortunate. Uh, fighting is uh, is, uh, is uh, competing, traveling, meeting people, you know, making friends uh, uh, out of my opponent. Uh, you know, I, you know, my approach is different. My approach is like this. I'm, when I'm going to competing, I'm, you know, I found it relaxed me to be friendly. It relaxed me to be friendly. Some people, uh, to be able to get off the, the emotion or the, the, um, because, you know, it's very stressful, right? To fight. It's very stressful. You get there, you're very nervous. You, you know, you're panicking, you, you're nervous, you're sweating. And some people build a lot of anger. They, they're very angry. You know, in the face-to-face, they even, you know, almost punch you or push you, shove you, swear at you. They don't want to shake your hands, you know, and so on. So that's how they react because of their insecurity and because of their, their fear, right? They, they react like that to, to feel better or to feel stronger, you know. But for me, being friendly, you know, shaking your hands, smiling, you know, being friendly is my approach. I feel better that way, and I'm really able to, you know, walk into. I'm very nervous when I'm when I'm when I'm about to go into the the, the, the cage. Then, once I'm there, I'm very relaxed, and you know, everything just flow. Everything just happen. So, um, it's very nice. It's, I feel much better when I'm friendly, not when I'm angry. I don't need to be angry. I'm friendly. So. And that has brought me to to have a lot of friends out of my opponent. And then, then we go, then now we can talk about uh, uh, me uh, meeting Alan Sang, even though we are we have been opponent, we fought each other. Uh, and Brandon Vera, we are opponent. We haven't fought, we haven't fought yet, but we might fight uh, in the future, near future or, or not. You know, so but we are friends. We talk to each other. And then I mentioned to him again uh, once uh, during an interview in uh, in Florida that uh, where they asked me uh, if uh, I'll be able willing to fight them again, and I said that look, when it comes to walk, we walk. There's no problem. We are friendly now. I'm going to the house. We train together. We eat together. We laugh together. And we are very friendly. That doesn't stop us for to stand in a cage and trade, you know, because that's our job, and that we walk there, you know. But uh, yeah, so when it comes to being professional and doing our job, we do our job, and it doesn't stop us from uh, from being friendly and uh, and uh, and you know caring for each other. Yeah, that's an awesome mentality, man. And I was seeing a recent uh, you know interview that you did with Nick Atkin, where you were saying that you were kind of like a kid in a candy shop getting to train at Sanford MMA. I imagine the positive attitude really lends itself to. The longevity you've had in combat sports because you've com- been competing at a high level in multiple disciplines for over you know two decades at an elite level yes definitely i'm i'm very pleased that my lifestyle and my approach you know has uh, kept me you know going uh, until now you know at my age i'm still uh, i was saying to nick uh, uh you know like yesterday that uh, uh, i feel like i'm in the best shape of my life you know physically and mentally I'm, uh, there's nothing stopping me. I feel totally, I feel like I'm about 30 years old. So uh, if I'm healthy and if I'm enjoying what I'm doing, there's no stopping me. Again, age is just a number and uh, it's all up to, to your, the lifestyle that you, that you have. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's reflected in, you know, what you've been able to do, just the, you know, exemplary lifestyle. But I wanted to touch on this last fight here with Thomas Narmo because it must have been a bit of a bummer for you because it was a pretty exciting fight, pretty competitive, largely. It was, you know, a fun one to watch. But, yeah, just, you know, the errant groin strikes that were taking place there. Like, was it like a pretty, I guess, deflating feeling in the one circle when it was ruled a no contest there? Because it seemed like you were maybe not as enthused about the no contest verdict, which, you know, fair enough. But, like, how would you characterize how you felt after that Narmo fight there? Uh, to be honest, uh, once the decision was uh, announced, I was very disappointed and I was very confused. And I think that lead that you can't see it on the image because I think they, they removed that part out. But 
it, that led to uh, a lot of discussion we had. Uh, there was, you know, I, I wasn't okay with it, and I voiced my uh, my objection. I voiced it very loudly, you know, there, um, especially because uh, just before when I was waiting, the referee already told me if he doesn't continue, you win the fight uh, because you've been leading. Uh, so and we already passed the second round, so we are at the end of the second round. So if he doesn't continue, you naturally win the fight. So I was like, okay, uh, it's up to him. If he continue, I'm I'm good. I'm in a I'm in a in a good place. And you know what? During the whole fight, I was trying not to look for uh, for the knockout. I was I just wanted to. The game plan was for me to just pace myself, be very calm, very composed, and just you know pick him. Uh, you know, like you know, take my time and pick him bit by bit. You know, pick him bit by bit, and just with uh, no rush. And that's what I was doing. So once he was down, and and I was there in the corner, my my what I was thinking in my head was, you know what, I'm ready to knock him out. He get up, I will knock him out. And then he didn't get up. But again, I knew that it was just uh, natural. It was just you know, uh, it's very smart for him not to get up because. I don't think there was anything else he could have done. He was done. Uh, I could I could hear him scream already. His leg was hurt. He was hurt. There was nothing else he could have done. Uh, so I was very really disappointed. I knew, I knew that I won that fight. He knows, my opponent, he knows that I won the fight. He came out after the fight, uh, you know, outside, and he told me that, dude, you won the fight. You beat me up. You won the fight. I'm sorry that uh, I, I, I left, you know. But... Um, I know, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, one championship, even the boss himself messaged me and say how he was uh, very happy with my performance and he knew that I won the fight and he gave me the win bonus. So, although, you know, I would have liked, because, you know, it's not just about the money, I would have liked to have my hand raised and to uh, have, uh, you know, what I deserve, you know, uh, uh, officially, you know. I didn't get that and, of course, that, that's helpful. But you know what's good and what I choose to focus on? Uh, I receive a lot of message, both locally and internationally, from all my fans in Hong Kong and all over the world, and they see me as the champion and they praise my performance. So if I'm the people champ, I'm fine with that as well. Yeah, definitely the people's champion for sure, man. And it was just an incredible visual, just like the reach advantage he had and just the ability that you had to like manage the range and stuff like that it was almost like you had the reach advantage in certain regards there but you had also mentioned in that nick atkin interview that i referenced that there were certain heavyweights that were kind of you know standing out and that you'd maybe like to you know get in there for at least one more bout in 2021 like are there certain specific heavyweights that you would like to test skills against with inside the one circle or just more like let the matchmakers kind of figure something out i'm trying to name anyone because uh, that's not my style but uh like i said to nick um, the the heavyweight division is is uh, is packed at the moment, and uh, and really I have at least uh, uh, maybe, maybe five six people that I haven't fought before, and that are there for me to fight. So uh, I'm looking for one more fight before the end of the year, and I'm sure it'll be announced soon. Yeah, I mean you've been with the promotion for you know so long you've tested skills with a lot of people i mean getting you know fresh matchups would be good and i'd be curious to get your opinion on that because you've been with the promotion since 2013 and just can you talk about just how much the promotion has grown and how much your individual growth has gone along with that because you know it's a cool relationship there yeah you know when i started with the promotion uh, uh, uh the promotion was uh you know fairly new and uh and, and and fairly modest you know we were, we were the, the the it wasn't such a big event you know we didn't have uh, so many athletes it's just amazing to see how far we have gone how far the promotion has gone and how far uh, i have gone myself you know uh, i started uh, when i started with one championship on my instagram page i had maybe i don't know two or three or four thousand followers and when i done uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, highlight reel uh, uh, knockout with um, Mahmoud Hassan in 2013, where I did the spinning heel, heel kick. Uh, once that video was published, I think my Instagram went from uh, 4,000 to 100,000. And uh, and since then, I've been from 100,000 to now almost uh, 700,000. So 
in both my social media, I'm over a million, you know, follower, and and that just say how far we have gone. You know, it, it's amazing. You know, the the, the outreach and and uh, has been incredible. Uh, we have gone really far. I'm very proud. And this company has, uh, you know, has done a lot, you know, for me and for a lot of athletes and for you know for Asia. You know, we we uh, we are grateful to. You know, to be able to perform in such a, you know, in such a high standard, with um, uh, um, with uh, such quality, you know, around us, we have, you know, we have, um, um, uh, you know, the the way one championship work for me, you know, has made me stick around for this long, you know. Otherwise, you know, I would have stopped already. But the 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 what they stand for, you know, it's for me, it means a lot. You know, the respect that we have there, the, you know, the the rules, the regulation is very respectful and it's very encouraging. For me to have uh, the boss, you know, Chatter himself message me after a fight, you know, to always encourage me or to give me some, some advice. And that he does that not just to me, to a lot of fighters. It, it's, uh, that's a personal touch and, and it's amazing and, and that is very encouraging. So, I'm very grateful. Yeah, I love hearing that, man. Definitely a great fit for sure. But you've been really great with your time, and I want to be mindful of the rest of your schedule. So, is there anything you might want to kind of add as a parting thought as we're wrapping things up here, man? Well, I'm looking forward to get back out there. Uh, I just got back to Hong Kong. I want to catch up with uh, my Hong Kong people, my Hong Kong fans uh, who are, you know, looking forward to to meet me, you know, in my center. Uh, to get some chat or training. Um, uh, but I'm very happy for all the support and all the messages that I got from uh, you know all over the world. I've got uh, thousands of thousands of messages, and and that's you know always you know very encouraging. And you know, uh, God bless everyone, and I hope everyone keeps safe out there. Awesome message to end things off on from the People's Champion, and really looking forward to hearing news about that upcoming fight there, man. Thanks for the time, Elaine. Hopefully have you on the show again. Take care. Thank you for having me.